The Azan, the Islamic call to prayer, reverberates from mosques throughout the city of Gaza. Five prayer times each and every day summon Allah's faithful servants. Since the period of the first intifada in the year 2000, religious awakening has grown dramatically in the Gaza Strip. At that time, the number of mosques was estimated to be 500. Statistics 14 years later in 2014 show that this number has now doubled to nearly 1,000 mosques, which are attended by hundreds of thousands of Muslims both night and day. And the teaching of the Muslims, they have the forgiveness, which they call it in Arabic, Samah. So, to forgive someone, suppose, suppose to have love. There is a striking image, which is evident in almost every Palestinian city. In the neighborhood of Zaytun in Gaza City, for example, you can see the Katib al-Wilaya Mosque, situated next to the Roman Orthodox Church, the Church of Porphyry. This living example, witnessed for centuries, proves that fraternity and tolerance between the Muslim and Christian communities is indeed possible, and how the fate of each community is linked to that of the other in the land of Palestine. Christians and Muslims, we have to live together in love because we are the creation of God and the God is one. So, especially here in Gaza, Christians and Muslims are living in a very good relationship, very close relationship because we are living as a family. We participate together, Christians and Muslims, in their festivities in their social life, social events. We all share the same concern for the martyrs and for the wounded. We suffer together, which prompts the Christian to host the Muslim and vice versa, so that we introduce to the whole world a demonstration of brotherhood between Muslims and Christians in Gaza and Palestine at large. The fraternity among Muslim and Christian communities was also demonstrated when the ferocity of the most recent war imposed by Israel on the Gaza Strip in 2014 escalated to an inhumane degree that shocked the world when the Israeli occupation army invaded border areas indiscriminately, killing men, women and hundreds of children and displacing thousands of ordinary citizens who were forced to seek asylum to safer shelters. Churches and Christian homes served as shelter for thousands of victims. We refused to leave from the beginning. The Israelis dropped flyers from their planes asking us to leave, but we refused up until yesterday and the day before. All of Beit Hanan was flaring under phosphorus bombs emitting poisonous gas and the F-16s in the sky and tanks on the ground. We waited until daylight to leave while our house was destroyed. Allah grants victory to the resistance. We accept the people in the church because we are very close in the area when they are hitting the Israeli army. We are very close to Sajayya and Zaytun. We are in Zaytun. And so many people from Betlachia, Bet Hanun and Sajayya, which they were supposed to leave their places, were it was because it was hitting their places from the tanks. So 
they run to find a, fa a safe place. Safe place, it is the mosque or the church. A young father or a young woman carrying a baby on his hands or her hands, you cannot close your eyes. You heard speak and you have to apply. So, this is the, um, the cause that we open the doors of the church and to accept the people. The compassion and empathy did not stop at the churches hosting displaced persons, but even more was offered providing environments to Muslims to lead Islamic prayers in their churchyards. During the Ramadan time, so this it was very difficult time for the people. It was the holy day of al qadr which they call it in Arabic, which supposed these people to pray during the night time. So the church respect everybody. So what we have done, we gave to them all the, the freedom, all the permission to pray down in the yard of the church without no comments. Tragedy unites communities. The Israeli occupation forces were livid to discover this Muslim Christian unity, so they decided to open fire on a church in an effort to spoil this rising affinity and sympathy under the false pretext that they observed rocket fire coming from the church grounds. This was a war on people, not a war on Hamas, by an entity which has a long history of massacring the innocent since 1946. The situation explains the relationship between the Muslims and the Christians in the Gaza Strip as we share the same experience and sorrow together while we walk towards the liberation of our goods Jerusalem and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Israel targeted places of worship and even schools, universities, hospitals and cemeteries with their attacks, gross violations of international law that reflects the moral depravity and severity of the Israeli occupation army and indirectly the complicity of Western nations, whose medias and governments widely ignored the deliberate targeting and bombing of churches and mosques in the Gaza Strip. In all, more than 200 mosques were blown up with debris raining down on the heads of innocent worshippers. The Israeli occupation reduced 74 mosques to rubble, while 179 more were directly hit by this aggression. Several mosques were destroyed on top of the heads of worshippers, such as Al Ghassam Mosque in Al Nusirat of Middle Governorate. They were killed while waiting for the dawn prayer service to begin. Al Ghassam Mosque in Nusirat, also known as the Grand Mosque, used to be the largest mosque in the middle zone of Gaza, where it is densely populated, after an Israeli airstrike reduced it to dust. All that is recognizable now is the minaret. The claim that mosques were being used to harbor weapons and tunnels is unproven and denied by local residents. The occupation army contacted us on Saturday, August the 8th. The caller introduced himself as Officer Musa, asking whether this was Yahya Atawil's house. My husband answered in the affirmative. The officer informed him that we have five minutes to evacuate, as they are intending to target Al Qassam Mosque. The officer hung up, and my husband rushed to inform the neighbors. My mobile phone rang. Neighbors called to inform me the mosque was going to be bombed. Four young men were back there getting themselves ready for prayer inside the mosque. I don't know how I managed to flee the place. We were 13 people. My husband quietly told us we have to evacuate as the Al-Ghassam Mosque was going to be targeted. We dressed and went to my brother-in-law's house in this tower. The mosque was hit three minutes later. I 
I was escaping when just 3 to 40 meters behind me, they hit the place with another missile. The vicinity was covered with dust and smoke. It was horrifying. My neighbors and beloved ones were calling, asking where I was. I told them I was outside the mosque, but four young men were in sight and I had no idea what happened to them. In the early morning hours following the bombardment, two bodies were retrieved while the third, the body of my son Zodi, remained somewhere under the rubble. They searched for three days with an excavator but found nothing. The search was called off but resumed again after 60 days. The excavator operator came across my son Zodi's body then. He was next to them. We thought he was somewhere else. This means the young men were here. Two of them were recovered. One of whom was waiting here while another was hiding in the corner. We found him in this corner a month and a half later. The whole apartment underneath us sustained damages while the barrier between us and the mosque was removed. Our home and the shop sustained a great deal of damage. The entire pulpit flew into the house. The electrical generator was this site, but ended up landing in Abu Zir family's grocery shop. Can you see this repair shop where the electrical generation entered? Can you see what the shop looks like now? A 60 kilo electrical generator flew to the shop. Al Susi Mosque was located west of Gaza City in the densely populated Shati refugee camp. This mosque too was reduced to rubble by Israel's US provided F 16 war jets. The raid resulted in the destruction of residential homes surrounding the mosque and caused the fall of martyrs and many injuries amongst the families residing in that neighborhood. The enemy targeted this mosque in its recent aggression like they did to the other mosques in the Gaza Strip. On July 30th, they hit the mosque with unmanned drones that landed on the water tankers. None of the neighbors heard anything and so did nothing. Then they fired another missile, which made us aware and think they were going to target the mosque, as that was the way the Israeli occupation worked, with unmanned drone missiles firing first. We went to the balconies and windows immediately to see what was going on. We didn't know that the mosque was the target and the missiles hit the water tankers. They fired another missiles after that. Then people started to scream, urging us and our neighbors to leave our homes. We were unsure as to whether we should leave and risk getting bombed or stay and be exposed to the same risk. It was indescribable, a horrific time. We had 50 people in our house. I was awake with my family next to me, which includes three boys, two daughters and my wife. My two brothers and their families were there as well, totaling about 50 people. I woke the boys up and the girls and rushed to my brother upstairs. I can't describe to you how this all happened in just minutes. Those who were sleeping woke up alarmed and we had to look after the elderly members and those who needed to be carried. Bottom line, we all left the building. We were separated from each other. I lost three of my kids and had to go back to search for them. We weren't able to grasp what was happening in the moment. Electricity was cut and neighbors were screaming, while ambulances rushed injured and firefighting crews raced around. I had to return after receiving a phone call from my neighbors, telling me that my kids were at his place. On the way, I was injured, hit by shrapnel in my foot, back and head, and my brother was injured too. 
We were running, but we couldn't run far, because the missiles came down so fast as we were following one another. قصف هذا المسجد اثنين صواريخ كما يقولون صواريخ زنانة ثم ألحق بصواريخ This mosque was targeted with two unmanned drone missiles followed by two F-16 vacuum missiles as they call them. The F-16 raid was the reason for the collapse of the minaret on the Rodwan family's home. ضربة صواريخ الف 16 هي كانت السبب في نزول أو سقوط المئذنة على بيت الرضوان. لما وقعت المئذنة على البيت طبعاً The tip of the minaret that collapsed onto the house weighed 10 tons. It flew about 8 meters onto the roof. It was Allah's mercy that prevented it from falling on the neighbors. Otherwise, none of them would have survived. The main body of the minaret broke three to four roofs due to its heavy weight. يعني من من التقل تبعها كان في هناك شهداء من جراء القصف رجل مسن تأثر من القصف. There were some martyrs as a result of the bombardment. An old man died and a pregnant woman from the Rodwan family died also. امرأة من آل رضوان كانت حامل بمولود طبعا توفى من جراء القصف. مرت أخويا محمد كانت حامل ست شهور على. My sister-in-law was six months pregnant. She miscarried on the spot due to the explosion. They sprayed missiles over the Palestinian people to the extent that shrapnel, sand and small stones reached as far as 500 meters. There were 20 to 30 injuries suffered by people in nearby houses due to the impact of stones and glass flying. Al-Sosi worshippers refused to be distracted from performing their prayers near the mosque and so set up a makeshift mosque on a vacant land beside the original location only to see it bombed also. Israeli aircraft did not give them the opportunity to pray. <laughs> We started preparing a makeshift mosque the very next day. An organization provided us with the shading to finish it. We were shocked the next night to be hit by another bombardment targeting the area. We rushed to the area to find they targeted the exact spot we were preparing to build a makeshift mosque. The town of Huza in the south, with a population of 9,000, suffered immense damage after it was heavily bombarded for three days by the Israeli regime to the degree that the town was almost completely wiped out. Seven mosques out of nine were destroyed, the most prominent being the township center mosque, Jamad Ibad Ar-Rahman. After the annihilation, Israeli forces besieged the town for ten days cutting it off from the outside world. A Red Cross worker described the scene as a tsunami of death. Unfortunately, they sabotaged the infrastructure and the structures. The whole electricity network in Al-Najjar neighborhood and the entire city in Khuza was destroyed. It was intentionally leveled by bulldozers. They removed the pylons, wires, water networks and everything. They even leveled seven mosques and blew them up with dynamite. They are taking out their anger on the mosques. We don't know why they're doing this to mosques. They target people, mosques, houses and everything around the mosque. All surrounding houses were destroyed. I live next to the mosque, but no one passes by or greets me now. I am so affected by this. Northern Gaza also suffered extensive destruction of its mosques. One example was the beautiful Omar Abdul Aziz Mosque in Beit Hanan, important to Muslims worldwide and renovated by a Malaysian Islamic organization in 2013, was bombed to smithereens for the second time in its history by an Israeli airstrike. Rubble and a pile of concrete remain.
They targeted this mosque in every war. This is the second time now. The first building was bigger than this. It was three or four floors high, but it was targeted too. The Omar mosque that we built was targeted as well. If they had destroyed my house, it would be much easier for me to bear. I have a great affection for this mosque that Allah only knows. The mosque is my whole life as I attended there one or two hours before the call for prayer to recite the Quran and help clean the mosque. A whole life revolves around the mosque. The Israeli occupation demonstrates its hatred on houses of the Lord. Destroyed mosques were found to have no weapons or resistance in them. We at the Ministry of Waqf supervise the mosques. We challenged the occupiers to present one piece of evidence that mosques were being targeted because of the Palestinian resistance or any resistance that acts whatsoever. They are places for worshipping only. The Palestinians did not quit or give up as their holy places fell. They immediately went to work to construct temporary mosques and places for prayer. And whilst these hastily built sanctities provided little protection from the weather, it brought the people together for each call to prayer. We set up structures to pray under while the rainfall was dripping on us. Praise the Lord that we are steadfast and that we will survive on this soil. No matter what the Zionists do, we will prevail and reform. This mosque was built by residents of the neighborhood and from other good doers. We built a mosque inside the refugee camp in an area that was designated to be a park. We used material from greenhouses to build the mosque and we pray there. We decided to build a makeshift mosque because people here are devoted to their religion. We agreed we should build the mosque to perform rituals of the Lord and decided to make the mosque out of material from greenhouses. You can see those two where people used to fill the mosques before it was targeted. Now there are barely three lines in this small mosque. The houses of most of the neighbors were reduced to rubble and they left the area to rent elsewhere. The Israelis target Palestinian mosques repeatedly. 27% of mosques along the Gaza Strip are either completely or partially damaged. It is their intention to subjugate the Arab and Muslim people. It is also to pave the way for the tearing down of the sacred Al-Aqsa Mosque to be replaced by a Jewish temple. It's like they're telling people not to be shocked if the Al-Aqsa Mosque is destroyed, just like any other mosque that was destroyed in the Gaza war. That's what they want. But Al-Aqsa is different. If it was destroyed, all Muslims around the world under God's will would rain down on Israel, but the Lord will protect it with all its might. The Palestinian people believe that the Lord protects his house. They believe that the mosques and indeed Islam will eternally prevail despite all efforts by its enemies to destroy them. <laughs>